The most important thing that you're going to do for your lifetime on the instrument is develop your hands. Um, the reason why that is, is because your hand development is going to be the one thing that directly affects how you sound the most. And that's over everything else. Chops, coordination, speed, none of that stuff is nearly as important as hand development. The reason why that is basically is because um, you know the better your hands are developed, the smoother you're going to sound, the less fatigue you're going to encounter, and most importantly, the less chance of developing any kind of injury, either short term or long term, because of bad technique. So you got to continually be working on your hands, and I think the, the biggest key, in my opinion. Um, and developing great hands is not really waiting until practice time to do them. I keep a practice pad under our sofa in the living room right in front of the TV. So, you know, if my wife and I are sitting there watching Seinfeld reruns or Stranger Things or whatever, I'm just there working on my hands, um, doing all kinds of different things and I'll just sit in front of the TV just doing random exercises I don't have any kind of routine or anything like that um, I don't have a specific regimen written out that I do I just picked up the sticks and start moving them so new drummers there are 26 standard rudiments available to you that you can find out you know what they are in, in any book you pick up um, I suggest you eventually tackle all of them because they're great ones in there. The further along you get in them, you start to run into, you know, ratamacues and fly flies and all kinds of different types of diddles and, and stuff like that. But I'm here to let you know that there are only three that you really need to know and, uh, and continually work on in order for you to develop really awesome hands. These three rudiments are gonna be the three tools that you use 100% of the time on the drums. The top three best rudiments for hand development, single stroke, double stroke, single paradiddle. That's it. If those are the only three that you work on, on a regular basis, you're gonna have wicked hands. Guaranteed. There are definitely benefits to learning some of the other ones, and I'm actually going to add a fourth one at the end of this. I'll give you a, I'll give you a bonus plus one exercise to do. But those are the three, man. Single, double, single paradiddle. If you work on those on a continuous basis, over time, you're going to be surprised at how much better you sound on the drums. So, um, I'm just going to show you real quick how I work on each one. Single stroke. Um, there are two different ways that I work on the single stroke. And um, the first one is using the fingers, and the second one is using the wrist. It's, it's super important that you work on your singles using both your fingers and your wrist. So, my, um, my sort of pivot point or my fulcrum is with the middle finger and um, that's basically what's happening that's my uh, my point of reference as far as rebound um, some guys use the index finger that's cool too whatever you're comfortable with I tend to use this I switched to this one a few years back and I just kind of stuck with it so with both hands you know that's all I do working from the fingers all I'm doing is just kind of pulling up on the butt end of the stick like that and generally how I work on them is how I play as well if you notice while I'm playing my elbows are tucked in you know my arms are close to my body there's not a whole ton of movement really unless I'm you know going to hit a cymbal or whatever but for the most part this is home base and this is how I like to practice them. 
since it's how I play. So I work it from the fingers and then from the wrist. When I start working from the wrist, it's like bouncing a tennis ball. You've heard that a million times because it's just true. It's like bouncing the stick, exact same motion, and I work it from the wrist. So I'll go from there to there. And, um, and I'll do that, you know, for as long as I feel like doing it, and then I'll just switch to something else. Traditional grip, you know, same thing. I'll work it from the wrist. And then from the fingers as well. Um, basically what I'm doing when I'm switching to fingers for speed, all I'm doing is I'm bringing my index finger in like that on the stick. And basically what you're doing when you bring your index finger in like that, you're sort of lowering the ceiling on, um, on the range of travel for the stick. So if that's open, you know, and you bring your finger in, you're dropping that ceiling and then you can engage the fingers that way. So I work it from the wrist and then the fingers And then I'll just, I'll do that again for however long I feel like doing it. Double stroke. Um, when I work on my double strokes, the way I like to do it, you know, it's really not much of a secret anymore, but um, the way I like to do it is I like to accent the second note of the double. That way you get a more pronounced double stroke, especially when you're playing it on your toms. Um, it's a lot harder to play doubles on the toms if you're digging into it like that, like you'll never get a clean double. You wanna focus on drawing out the, um, drawing your notes out of the drum. And you do that by accenting the second note of the double. So when I launch into my doubles, um, I never, I never just kinda of dig into it in a traditional sense in that you start with two rights and then two lefts and then two rights and two lefts. What I'll do is I'll start with one right to just kind of officially kick off the doubles and then start it actually with my left hand. So instead of doing it like this, I'll do it like this. So what I'm actually doing is snapping out that second note. So. Um, I'm playing the first note and then snapping out the accent. And it's just easier for me and, and more comfortable for me to do, I guess, um, when I sort of launch it with one accent stroke and then start it with the other hand like that. All right, same with the... Um, with a traditional grip, um, when I'm snapping out that second note, I'm actually using my thumb to um, sort of push down that, that second accent. A little bit of my index finger as well, I'm just kind of shotgunning it kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, so it's like that. And then last one, single paradiddle. Single paradiddle just makes sense. It's the combination of the two. One single plus one double. The reason why the single paradiddle is most important is because you're working on both of them at the same time. Um, the single and the double. When you're playing fills on the drums, that's all you're doing is a combination of singles and doubles. All of the other fancy rudiments um, that are available to you, Again, very cool to work on, but you're not gonna use them nearly as much as the single and the double. So, single paradiddle. I 
I always accent the downbeats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. I'm keeping in mind the height of the stick as well, you know, lifts and levels and all that kind of stuff. Making sure that, um, you know, my, my softer strokes are at a certain height down here. And then I'll keep my accents a little bit higher. You know, the, the faster you go, that the, the shorter your accent stroke's gonna get. But it's, you know, the motion's still the same. And then again, you know. Um, so yeah, that's basically it, man. Those are the three. Now the last one I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna throw in as a bonus. It's actually really good as well. Um, this one is best, I think, for developing uh, stick control, finger control, um, and articulation as well. And it's the flam tap. I love doing the flam tap. Um, basically it's, because you got that grace note you know, in front of your, in front of your accented stroke. I do this one quite often. With any kind of flam exercise, I think, it's not super important that you play it fast. I think those rudiments are more for control and, and articulation. So I do the flam tap quite a bit. Um, I just find that it, it, a lot of times it comes in handy when I'm doing like, you know, tasty stuff on the hi-hats or um, some cool stuff on the snare or, or whatever. Um, so the flam tap is, is really great for working on your control and, um, you know, your dynamics and all that. Kind of thing. So it's basically if you're going one, two, three, four, like that, all you're doing is adding that sort of grace note in front of the accent. Now, one last tip I'm going to share with you guys. Um, it's a little secret that you can sort of do to, to help you to relax and help you to keep your elbows in. And one of the coolest ways to do that is take another pair of sticks while you're working on your, your hand exercises, get a second pair of sticks and stick them under your arms like that. And then just carry on. Doing whatever you want to do. This kind of helps to train you to sort of keep your, your elbows in. Um, because if you're if you're out too far, you're going to drop it, right? Just makes sense. So, um, it's another, it's, a, it's just a cool way to sort of help you to, to train yourself to keep your elbows nice and tucked in while you're doing these. And it helps you to keep the focus on your wrists and your fingers while you're doing these exercises. I think Dennis Chambers said in an interview once, he used to use phone books. He, put, he used to put phone books under his arms to, to help him, um, you know, do the same thing. So, yeah, grab a couple of sticks, stick them under your arms, and then just do your exercises. So that's it, man. The whole adage about keeping it simple, it's never been more true in this particular case. Single, double, single paradiddle, and then just do a simple flam tap, or you can do like a flam paradiddle, whatever you wanna do. But if those are the only four that you work on, you're gonna have really awesome hands. It doesn't matter if you ever learn how to play a drag, or, you know, or whatever, or um, Rademacue, or any one of those. They're great to tackle, and I suggest you do, but I'm just saying spend way more time on those first three, 
and then any kind of phlegm exercise to develop your control. And you're gonna have wicked, wicked hands in no time.